Hello everyone, and welcome to Fears to Fathom, Norwood Hitchhike. The second part in the new episodic horror series on Steam, and one which has really captured my attention because of the design philosophy that I absolutely adore. Basically, they're short, cheap experiences. In fact, the first part, which I already played on this channel if you want to see it, is free. And basically, if the first one is any indication to go by, they seem to be taking the idea that these are like almost playable no-sleep stories. No-sleep being a subreddit where people tell these ostensibly true stories about creepy things that happen to them. In that way, I can't help but notice the similarities to another favorite series on this channel. It's actually very similar in premise to the Chillis art games that I played which are also short, cheap horror experiences, which I've always described as feeling less like a game and more like a story someone is telling you of something creepy that happened to them. This series, if the first part is to be anything to go by, seems to be deliberately invoking this feeling by actually framing the stories as a post made on No Sleep. Now I don't know to what extent this part will connect to the previous one, or even if these parts will be connected at all, but just in case, I do recommend going back and watching my playthrough of part one, just to be sure. Now I know that we are playing as a different character in this one, in this case a 19 year old girl on an interstate drive home, having to stay at a motel. And as you can see from this font, we've got a faux VHS aesthetic going on here. Which is something that normally I like. This happened to me when I was 19. Oh, we're still doing we're still doing the no sleep format. I'm a little over 21 now. I still remember this very clearly because of how creeped out I felt. I was a bit hesitant to write this out for the internet at first. But getting it out may help. Even if just a little bit. I was one of those people that loves gaming conventions. I'd go to every convention I get the chance to, and sometimes even meet some of my online friends. Though my parents weren't always thrilled at the idea of me going on interstate drives, but a plane ticket would have been too expensive. The convention I was at went great, and it was now the day to drive back home, but when I set off, I soon realized the traffic was horrible. I decided that I'd take the long way to avoid the traffic. It was a little over a 12 hour drive. WASD to drive. Oh, I'm actually controlling this. I get a text from Aiden Williams. Press escape to read messages. This does not seem like a time when I should be reading texts. Uh, but something that I remember from the previous part is that these games are setting out to be extremely atmospheric, extremely relatable experiences. So the first part centered around a 14-year-old boy being left home alone. Now I'm a 19-year-old girl on a late night drive on the way home. We're listening to the radio. I really hope this isn't copyrighted music. And just look at the way this is framed. We've got the road in front of us that we can barely see, the trees coming into view on the edge of our headlights, the blinding glow from the street signs as we passed. Near halfway through the drive, I realized I was low on gas. That's where these horror experiences shine, these very relatable experiences that allow you to either place yourself in the shoes of the protagonist or that allow you to think back to this game when you find yourself in a similar situation. Nope, I am a responsible girl. I am not answering these texts until I find a place to stop. Something that I did criticize the first part for, what just loaded, I love that. I love that so much. No sound cue. No sound cue at all. Just that small detail should you happen to glance to the side. 
And if you notice, you notice. I always love the idea of a silent jump scare because it means that your heart attack is left to be internal. The game isn't validating your scare, You're, it's just left to you. And in that case, it's left to you to think, did I really see that? Uh, but to finish the thought I've been trying to get out for the past few minutes, now that I have a moment, something that I actually criticized from the first part that I see is also present here is this faux VHS aesthetic. Because as you can see, we're still re receiving text messages with like an iPhone UI. So clearly this takes place in the present day, so why, are, why have they gone for this? It kind of feels like a follow the leader type of look, like because the Chillizard games did it, we've got to do it. And I can certainly feel the Chillizard uh, inspiration here. Eh, fill me up. Hi, can I get a $10 on pump 2? Hello? You heading to the bridge by yourself? The bridge? The Norwood Valley Road, I mean. Not a lot of people head down there this time of year. Be careful. What do you mean? For about a century now, many people have been going missing down there. And people who went looking for them never returned. Locals say the Norwood Valley monster had torn them up and hung them upside down on trees. <laughs> well, thanks for the gas. Ah, thanks for thanks for the service, bud. This is the kind of thing I would enjoy, but random passers through might not. Okay, so I and one more thing. If you see a woman in white or blue gown trying to get a ride, do not stop. Just step on the gas as hard as you can. Who is she? Some people say that she died in a car accident there on prom night. Some say that- Can I help you, sir? Some say that she seeks vengeance after she was murdered there. Regardless, she's out for blood. Whatever you do, never, ever, under any circumstance, pick up a hitchhiker. Those people out there on the road putting their thumbs out? They ain't what you think, ma'am. They just ain't. No, I love that. I love that for the same reason I love real folklore. It's something to... It's just an idea to put in the back of your head as you're going about your business. Now, even if nothing hap happens, I'll be jumping at every honking horn. I, I love this. I love how it builds itself up this way. The way it sets these expectations for me. And the way it's all so relatable. The way it's a situation that all of us will find ourselves in at one time or another. I adore that. I, I've always felt that horror has to be relatable to really land. And these these games, for all my criticisms that I had of the first part, they hit the mark and they work where it counts. Now I'm going to take a moment to read my text messages because I'm not I'm smart. I'm not going to be reading them while on the road. Holly, mom, I don't know you'll find any shop at this hour, but we're out of dog food. Can you get something for Milo? I'll pay you back. Okay, I guess I'm going back inside. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot here. You called? Yeah, I think I'm going to that convention. Can I please get your car for five days with who? Aiden? That internet friend? He's a nice guy. No. You're not going on a ten-hour drive by yourself. Well, I've already made up my mind. I'll drive you. Why don't you understand anything? Let's talk when I get home. Drive safe, Holly. Don't forget to call me. You got it, Dad. Aiden Williams. Anything else? Leaving now? Drive safe, Holly. Where did you reach? I told you to take that flight. Oh, Holly, it's going to be late when you get back. Hope you're feeling all right. I'll be all right. <laughs> okay, we're done. Discord. We got ticks. So, I'll see if I can get the car. Let you know. Finally going to take Milo on a walk. Well, oh, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is a new thing, so I keep totally forgetting to do this. Uh, thank you, Aiden, for reminding me. Uh, if you have any suggestions for other creepy videos you'd like me to do... Just any videos in general, uh, the best place to do that is at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you're into anything creepy and comfy, we have a really nice community there, so I highly recommend checking it out. 
Ah, thank you, Aiden, for reminding me to plug myself. I'll see if I can get the car, let you know. Finally going to take Milo on a walk. Right now, the character whose safety I'm most concerned about is Milo. I gotta remember to grab that dog food. Okay, plan is on. Heck yes, we're getting the car. Yep, big girl. You sure Ash can't come? I'll get the skateboard, too. You know, something... Are you driving all the way back? I don't really have a choice. Could have left tomorrow morning. Okay, give me a call. Something about this. I don't really trust this Aiden. I don't know. It's just a feeling. But, yeah, so here's the thing. And I'll say this while I head back into the store to grab some food for Milo. I like how it's given me multiple different directions to look in. The idea of the monster in the woods, the ghost hitchhiker by the side of the road, or even just the idea of not being able to trust strangers that you met online. These are all concepts that it's introduced to me in the first few minutes, and it's really left me guessing as to the nature of what's going to be happening. I don't know yet whether this series is actually going to be something that goes for the paranormal, because... Well, to be honest, even after playing through the entire first part, I still don't really understand what was happening there. Ah, I can talk to you. You heard about the Norwood Valley Monster? Huh? Come on, the Norwood Valley Monster. Big mistake. Well, that's not disconcerting at all. Ah, this is dog food. Okay, let's pick some up for Milo. That was that was the biggest thing on my mind. That'll be five dollars, man. Pay. And we got some dog food. I said I got pumped too, so I got to pull around to this one. Uh, do I put this in the trunk or how does this work? And also, I wonder if this affects my ending at all. Can I put it back here? I could just put that in the trunk. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, right, I can throw with G. I don't want any glitches. I want to make sure you go into a place where you'll actually stay. All right, now I probably have to pull around to pump two, correct? I like how freeform, like, not just scripted, I can actually get into and out of the car. All right, now let's reverse out of here. One thing I don't like is that this rearview mirror doesn't seem to work, which I just hit something. Yeah, this rearview mirror doesn't seem to work, and I can't turn and look all the way over my shoulder, so backing up is kind of a chore. Let's drive around this way. Yeah, that is definitely copyrighted music that's playing over the radio. Don't like that one bit. I filled the tank and was off to road again. Maybe want to run, run one more pass by those uh, by those subtitles. Can I please turn you off? All right, thank you. I'm so glad they included that. Driving at night is really therapeutic for me. At least it used to be. Remember, these subtitles are being on the road. You do realize a thing. Monsters truly do exist. And every single one of them looks just like you and me. I'm starting to think that maybe it's my friend who I can't trust. Hang on, wait. I feel like I should pull over and answer this text, because I don't feel like I'm going to be having the opportunity to stop a whole lot. That's it. I'm rerouting here. Hang on, wait. You gotta do what you got. No, that's Aiden. Surprisingly, there was dog food at the gas station, and you don't need me to pay for it. Oh, you don't need to pay me for it. It's not expired or anything, right? I... See, I... why am I... I'll admit, I was a terrible driver. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. Why are my lights out? Ah, there we go. Yeah, they just stopped when I pulled over to the side of the road. I don't know if that was a scripted event, or if it was caused by something I did. 
No. Okay, that puts more points into s scripted event territory. No. No. Now I must say, this is the kind of dilemma that happens on the road. I actually feel really panicky that I'm losing the one other car on the road. Because that was my gauge, that was my light. And the one other soul. This is not smart. I, I really should be pulling over right now. This is so unsafe. Oh, there we go. See, that's the thing is, even having the company of one other car on this lonely old road it's a comfort, even though, logically, you don't even know if you can trust them. It's still better than being totally alone. You actually feel that panic when they start to pull farther ahead, and I have to say, I'm really enjoying how this is really taking its time. It's planted these ideas in my head, and now it's just leaving me to stew in them for quite a long while. Now the road's really deteriorating past this point. Ah, uh, this must be the bridge that was talked about before. Now what did he say? He said not so many people head out this way this time of year. No. Now is not the time for you to be doing this. Okay, what el what, what else? What other pieces of advice did they did they give us? because anything that was said earlier might be important later on. We were filled in on a few different local legends. Uh, the other of which was the hitchhiking lady. If you see her in a white or blue dress, don't slow down, speed up. Oh, and there's all these objects off to the side of the road which occasionally become illuminated in the headlights. That is such a cool design choice because it means my eyes are constantly flicking to the side where I think I've seen something. I really feel like I'm in the middle of nowhere now, which... Was that the car that was in front of me before? That can't be a good sign. Oh, bunny. Don't hit the bunny. What, what is that noise? Do you hear that? It's like a choking or a grinding noise. No, now is not the time. Now is not the time at all. Some abandoned structures to the side of this road. There's this very weird thing about that night. No! I saw two big logs in the middle of the road blocking the way ahead. No! No! No, no, no. Do not make me get out. This is not good at all. Oh, this is not the smart thing to be doing. It almost seemed as if someone had deliberately put these here. But I didn't think much of it at the time. Uh, Negan's trying to stop me from getting to Hilltop. Oh, those were heavy. Come on, drag, 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 drag. Uh, these fences are actually some small comfort, knowing I can't just be grabbed from out of the darkness right here, but... No, no, no. Oh, I'm actually physically dragging them. I thought it was like a preset animation. No, 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 drag faster, drag faster, drag faster, drag faster! I just got jump scared by the leaves. Nope, get around, get around, get around! Up and over, get in the car, and get out of Dodge. Not the time for this! The car wouldn't start back up. So not the time! And I don't think I don't notice that those doors are unlocked. 
Uh, this is the Project Zomboid car experience. Just like that, I was stranded in the middle of nowhere with no phone service. All those sounds. I can I can I just say so far this is everything I want from a horror game. I don't mean to make like life I was told not to take rides from strangers. Okay. Throughout my life I was told not to take rides from strangers. But at that moment I had no choice. Is somebody coming down the road? I was scared how long it would take for someone to pass. Look at those trees swaying. 10.23 p.m. I saw a car nearing. Which direction? No, 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 get back here! Pure evil. I didn't understand how somebody could leave another human being stranded like that. Well, maybe they heard the same story I did. You see someone by the side of the road, don't stop, speed up. 10.43. Anybody else? Can I still open my trunk? Yeah, I'm going to want to make sure to take the dog food with me if I get picked up. Is there anything else abuse in here? Uh, all my bags are here. Hey, hey, hey! I didn't even see you coming! Get back here! Uh. Oh, you did stop. Now, if that's not an ominous image, I don't know what is, but I don't think I have another choice. Don't think I don't notice the sounds of conversation on the soundtrack. What is it trying to tell me with that? You're the girl from the gas station. Ah, oh, thank you so much for stopping. What are you trying to do out here? I think my car broke down. I can't call for help. There's no phone service. You think I can get a ride? Where are you heading? Just the nearest stop where I can call for help. Hop in. Thanks so much. Could you wait till I get my stuff? Alright, hurry up. Just throw it in the back. I won't be here too long. Okay, come on. Gotta hurry, hurry, hurry. I have a sprint, but it's not a very good sprint, so... Okay, priorities first. Dog food for Milo. You know, I just realized I don't like this. It's going to make me run back and forth several times. It's going to do something to me during that time. I just know it. But like I was saying before, this is just everything I've always wanted from a horror game. I had my criticisms of the first part, but so far, I have nothing but praise for this. I love how it's allowed itself to be the slow burn, where really 99% of everything that's happened has been just me being left with my own thoughts. Not just leaving me with my own thoughts, but allowing me to soak in the atmosphere after planting these thoughts in my head. But also, a good amount of misdirection, a good amount of planting multiple conflicting thoughts in my head. So I have no idea what to expect as far as where these scares are going to be coming from. Of course, right now, the chief suspect is none other than our guardian angel. I remember I read a story in one of my readings for the channel that somebody told, where they talked about how their car broke down and a good Samaritan stopped to help them. And they ended up saying, like, all right, uh, if you can still move your car, just follow me home and you can stay and you can kind of crash in my garage for the night. 
and they, they said that they saw them break down from their window. But as they st as he followed the Good Samaritan, they found that they were going down all these side streets, going several blocks, and he realized, there's no way this guy saw me break down from his window. And eventually he just peeled off, and never found out what the guy wanted. Alright, is that everything? I hope I'm not on a timer here. Because if I am, I'm going to end up stranded in the dark. Now, I know these are framed as stories told by the people who survived, but make no mistake, we can die here. As I found out while trying to play through the first part. Uh, can we close the bed? No? Alright, I guess I'm just hopping in the passenger seat then. No, is that not everything? You need to hurry up, I don't have all day. I'm done. Finally. Now hop in, and be quick. I am so uncomfortable right now. Sitting in a stranger's car, so you won't tell me who you are, where you're going? I'd rather not say if that's okay. If you say so. This is the guy who said, big mistake, when I brought up the Norwood monster. You're really lucky I had to be on this side of the town tonight. I must say, you're one brave young woman. How's that? You got any clue what happened to your car back there? I think it was the battery. Are you sure? Don't like that. It's my dad's. It's pretty old. Are you sure? Now, maybe I'm just reading too much into it, but that sounds like a really ominous question. So what do you think about what he told you back at the gas station? You really creeped me out. Interesting. Idiot tells that to every person traveling down here. So, is it true? What, the monster? Let's see... I've never seen the monster for myself, but there are... there are some things. And I'm afraid your car breaking down could have been one of them. Well, I must say, there's more than a little bit of trouble associated with what appears to be a deliberate roadblock. Hey, listen, I don't want to sound like that moron, but just remember this. You don't bother them, and you don't be bothered. You know, I'm sorry for being a jerk to you before. I'm not the best with people. I've actually never seen this before in a game. You could cut this tension with a knife. And it's all from that... It really has created this feeling of helplessness in accepting a ride from a stranger. After a little bit of small talk, he dropped me by a motel. And apparently they offered roadside assistance. Besides, I could use a little rest. Be careful. There are all kinds of people out here, he said ominously before leaving. Wow, he's tearing out of here. Is this my stuff? Oh, I kept the dog food! That's the only thing I care about. It's like the gnome from Half-Life 2 Episode 2. I, I feel like, actually, since I believe these games might have multiple endings, or variations on endings, I feel like the dog food is like some kind of secret morality test. The man was putting out the creepiest vibes imaginable. Gal need a room to shack up for the night? How much is it for a room? Forty for a single. Pay cash only. 
Room number nine, right over there. Ninety dollars. Tommy will take care of it next morning. Okay. Good. I'll let Tommy know. And one last thing. Try not to wake the other guests. They might not take very nicely to it. Okie doke. Well, I kind of thought that would go without saying, but... Now, isn't that a strange portrait? I mean, it's just a normal picture, but there's just something to those eyes. Like, it's... It's not quite indifference. It's... Maybe it's just me, but I feel like there's a little bit of just exasperated malice there. Like I'm a fly that she wants to swat. And there she is over there as well, so perhaps I'm reading far too much into it, and perhaps it's just an asset that they use to throw all over the place to give it some life. Alright, well, good night, creepy innkeeper. Am I not going to take my stuff with me? Okie doke. Have I mentioned that I love this so much? I mean, think about every scary story that's happened to you that you've ever felt was worthy of telling to people. That door is open a crack. So much of it is just trying to describe a feeling that you had. And so far, even though I've been pretty on edge, that's all I've had so far is feelings. This is a masterful work of atmosphere and tension. Okay. And when you manage to build tension in such a manner, something as simple as a door closing can be a pretty effective mild heart attack of a jump scare. Six, seven, which means that's probably going to be eight and nine over there across the lot. Dad, I may have to stay by a motel tonight. Not delivered. So there's still no service here. Now what about Aiden? Hey, where you at? Your dad's calling me. Um... Ah, and as in the previous part, it'll allow me to type into here, but it will not let me send. Like, why even let me do it? Okay, any other messages? Holly? Yeah, so everybody's worried about me, but I can't respond. It was nice and warm inside. Should, should I not go get my stuff? Except there was a smell. The type of musky smell you get from old houses. Hang on, I, I'm gonna make one last effort to retrieve my things. No? Okay, I guess I'm just supposed to leave it here. I am one trusting individual. Alright, home sweet home, I guess. And there's no mattress on the bed. Oh, I see that mechanic from part one is back. We can actually crouch next to blinds in order to see under them and apparently clip right through them. I'm going to have to go talk to the guy about this. I didn't need it. Yeah, personally, I'd also be against taking some random pills that I found in a motel room cabinet. Ah! Holy Christ! Oh. What are you doing here? I should be asking you. I'm Tommy, room service, here at Roadway Inn. The finest stop over at Norwood. I mean, what are you doing in there? You know, cleaning stuff. The guy at the front desk gave me this room. Hehehe. <laughs> I'm gonna have to ask you to sleep outside while I- to, oh, step outside. I thought he was asking me to sleep outside while I make the room. I'll just get my stuff. Okay, yeah, just leave him in there. Oh, a newspaper. Oh, looks like I can't examine it. Oh, 
Oh, my heart. See, that's the thing, is that... When you properly built your world, when you properly built your tension, when you properly established expectations in the mind of the player... Really need me some soda energy. Alright, let's get some of that. When you properly establish that mood, that feel, those expectations... Anything can send you out of your seat. And that's what this game is doing in such a masterful way. Can I not? Do I have to access an inventory somehow, or can I not pick that up? I am so confused about what's going on. Oh! Oh, consuming those items increases your sprint speed. Okay, so once I consume... It actually doesn't really feel like it's done anything. Ah, I can only sprint in the parking lot itself. Now, the fact that they felt the need to make this a mechanic is a little bit concerning. Does that mean that I'm going to have to run? Yep, got my stuff. Had a word with Joe about the situation. What's wrong with these people? Mercy, mercy, mercy. But don't you worry. It's safe here. Go get- I go get your car. And also, the room's phone's not working. If you need anything, just ask at the front desk. We've been trying to get it fixed, but we haven't been seeing enough guests lately. <laughs> but you have a good night. Now, I've been talking this whole time about trying to- Ah! Jerk. I've been talking about this this whole time about how establishing player expectation is important and kind of misdirecting you with different ideas for where the scares might be coming from. They did that by establishing the legend of the Norwood Valley Monster, the hitchhiker lady on the side of the road, and even just the danger associated with strangers in general. Now, it's kind of gone and added another layer to that by giving me multiple strangers to be worried about. We got the creepy innkeeper, the creepy repairman, and the creepy good Samaritan who has actually gone from suspect number one to solid three at this point. I am so annoyed that I'm only now realizing that I can pick up two hours at once. I think I just said hours, what I meant to say was items. I have no idea how I got those two words confused. But anyway, kerplunk. Uh, and I throw both at once as well. And one last bag, and most importantly, dog food for Milo. Something that I really like about this, about having to attend to all my different pieces of luggage, of having to worry about, like, getting the dog food and making sure I find a spot to rest, it, it, it all does an exceptionally good job of putting me into the role of this person. Not just a camera for the player to experience horror, but to actually give me goals and things to do so that I'm not just single-mindedly focused on where the scares are going to be coming from. Although, come to think of it, I never did check the closet. That was tense. And I can hide inside the closet. That's not good. <gasps> oh no. Did you just see what I saw? There was actually a mic indicator on the bot on the right side of the screen. It's actually gonna be utilizing my voice as a gameplay element. I am so afraid for what's to come. Uh, should I perhaps turn the lights off? Hang on, wait, no, get, get up, get up, get up. Hi! No, get up, get up, get up, get up! Call it foresight, but there was something very off about that place. Yeah, you're telling me! 
I couldn't help shake the feeling that something wasn't right. There is somebody using the toilet that I paid $40 for. The feeling of tiredness was overcoming my anxiety. A hot cup of coffee could help, I thought to myself. Okay, let's get up then. You do that. Oh, that is so... Nobody here. Yeah, totally normal for somebody to just come up and peek through your window. Let's see how you like it. Oh no! You get actual curtains. All I get are these cheap blinds that are curtains from this side. Okay, texture guy. Okay. Uh, the question is, where do I go for a cup of coffee? Is that something I have to get from the front room? Yo, where'd I get some Joe? Right over there, room number nine it is. Uh, I thought we were past this. Hi, I'm looking for some coffee. Unless there's a coffee machine in the room itself? Or maybe right here? No, that's water. I'm not really sure where I'm supposed to be going to get coffee. Maybe right there. Ah, yeah, that looks... Right? But I could have sworn I just heard breathing on my right side. Oh, I don't like standing next to this dark alleyway. With this creepy old building off to the side. Man, what even is this? Um... I'm not being smart right now. But, oh, we can't try the door. Do you see that shape in the corner? That could be a plant or like a garbage can or something, but it almost looks like there's somebody standing over there, doesn't it? I'm reluctant to check it out though. Espresso, bye. Consuming these items helps you stay awake. So, are there actually going to be tiredness mechanics as well? What's happening? What's happening? What is this? Okay, get to people. Have I been drugged or something? Get to people, get to people, get to people. Get to people. Hey, I could use some help. Where did you go? Where did you go? Oh, my controls are all inverted. Makes it so hard to do anything. Okay, back to the room. It's kind of my only chance at this point. If there's actually somebody out here coming for me, I am screwed. I've wasted so much time. Text from Dad. I can't read it. Alright, room 9, room 9, room 9. The static feels like it's getting louder, but I gotta get in there. Nope, 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 It is so hard to do anything with these controls. There's something wrong with this coffee. This has not helped me to stay awake at all. Well, it's woken me up. I don't know about the player character. Three eighteen AM. I was sedated. No! Ah, oh, gross. Just fart right into the phone, why don't you? Yeah, we were told the phones aren't working. 
Don't think I didn't see that. Oh, there's like a red haze on the side of my vision. And of course, it won't let me turn the light on. I... Okay. Did I just lose? Oh, what was that about? What? Oh, don't tell me I'm gonna have to go through that whole thing all over again. Please don't tell me I have to do all of that again. Ah, oh, thank God there's an autosave. The first one, I think, made you play it all over again if you died, but that was much, much shorter. Alright, autosave. Thank you. 12.08. So we still are pretty far back. Ah, oh, we have to do all of this again. Okay, give me a second, guys. I'm gonna cut all this out. See, the thing is, and this is something that I should have learned from the first part, you don't follow horror game logic. You follow the logic that you would be yelling at a character on a screen in a horror movie not to do. Now obviously the smart thing was not to check the closet, but typically a horror game would not allow you to progress unless you check the closet. Now this was true in the first part as well, so I should have known that I should have been doing the rational thing, instead of what I thought the game would expect me to do. So this time we're going to be ignoring that closet of death. And instead go seek help from the management. I was sedated. So, now here's the thing. I was sedated by the coffee I got from the coffee dispenser. Clearly this establishment is not entirely on the up and up. Okay, so we're gonna ignore whatever crap you're doing in there. I didn't feel safe going out. Well, what do you want me to do then? I could go hide in the bathroom, I suppose. You hear those footsteps, don't you? The question is, when is it going to be safe to go out? Oh, and don't forget, I did get a text from Dad. I still can't read it. And you know, that gives a sense of urgency, like whatever's in that text must be critically important to my situation, but how could it be, right? I can't tell if those are just ambient sounds or if he's walking around out there right now. I kind of wish I could look through that those slats in the door. I don't know if I'd realistically be able to. I'm going to do a dumb thing. I just, I don't understand what it wants me to do. I can still pick up my gear. But what about that? See if I open it from far away. Without getting close. That is such a creepy image, knowing that someone is in there, that contained within my frame, is a danger. But he only seems to pop out if I get close. What is it that you want me to do, game? I can turn the TV on. Ah, 
Uh, it feels like a bomb that I can't walk away from but don't know how to defuse. I just don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, and uh, the penalty for failure is quite high. It takes me, even with the checkpoint, it takes me a while to get back here. What if I just start shucking my stuff in the closet? Ah, uh, didn't make it. No, you can't have the dog food. Milo needs that. It's just not going to let me do it. Yeah, there's like a wall there, an invisible wall. I can clearly see that you're not in there. Can I go back to bed? I can. Well, this is certainly capturing a feeling I never thought I'd see in a video game. Nervously watching TV to take your mind off of how scared you are in an unfamiliar place. Question is, does this actually do anything for me? Or am I just pointlessly wasting time? Like, this thing... There's only one thing I can think to do, and that's to go investigate the closet, but... If it just leads me to that other jump scare, I'm gonna have to replay that whole motel segment all over again. You're saying I don't feel safe going outside, but I feel far less safe in my room where I just saw somebody. Like, I feel like the proper thing to do here is to go to the front desk and be like, Yo, there's somebody in my room. Maybe I can only sleep if the TV is off? Can I close the closet again? I don't want to get too close! What is it that it wants from me? Uh, a knock at the door. Maybe I really was just supposed to wait it out? Ah, uh, yes, front desk guy, front desk guy, yeah. Ah, uh, did I really just have to wait all this time? Who is it? Joe from the front desk, open the door, yes. Didn't I specifically tell you not to wake anyone up? I have complaints. What are you making all those goofy noises for? Whatever it is, just keep it down, miss. Is that... Why are your eyes all red? Mention the coffee machine. Are you messing with me? We don't have no coffee machine here. It's right over there! Okay, okay, here. I've had enough of you crazy goons here. For once, I thought we had a sober guest, but I guess I'm the crazy one here. Look, follow me. I hate my job. Lead Joe. Actually, can I lead him into the closet? Yeah, I mentioned the coffee machine, but why don't I mention the dude I saw in my room? Although I suppose the main character at this point might be thinking that she hallucinated it. This is some very spooky soundtrack. Yeah, it's not there. It must have been set out as a trap. I swear to... No, who's that over there? Who's that over there? Was that person walking out of my room? Go back to the room. I swear to God it was right here. I said go back now. Did you not hear me? I said go back to the room and don't get out. Oh my god. There should be some medication in your room that should offer you some relief. What? What kind of logic is that? I suspect a guest is high. Take some random pills that I left in the drawer. 
This whole place is totally wrong. Whatever it is, I think that guy's part of it. That doesn't make any sense. Okay, first things first, let's close this door. Thank you. Let's put my stuff back where my stuff goes. If I can grab two, if I only can grab two things on the way out of here, it's gonna be the skateboard and the dog food. That doesn't make any sense. I'm not gonna take them. Not if I don't have to. It's gonna make me do it, isn't it? It's gonna make me do it. This doesn't feel right. Requires water. Great. I'm not going to get it from right there. I'm going to get it from in here. Oh, there's no sink in here. Awesome. So I got to stand right next to the closet. This convenient fade to black. Learn from Schiller's art. This convenient fades to black allows a scene change that can change anything about the room while I'm looking away. really worried there was going to be something behind me when I turned around. Okay, so I already have the pills. So did I take them or do I have to take them? Who's taking pictures? Do you hear that whispering? I don't even know who you are. Hello? I'm not here. 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 What is that sound? Hello? I can't even commentate. I have to... I have to actually whisper. Even this is probably too high. Hello? He's not going to go away. Hello. Hello. Answering this door cannot be the right thing to do. He's been here for so long. Hello. Then again, as this game is shown, it's not afraid to make us wait a long time for something to happen. Hello. Actually, uh, so I'm basically identifying people by their shirts and pants in this game. That's not the guy from the gas station, is it? I mean, I can't see his face, but I think they were both wearing a similar shirt. Hello? Uh, Hello? I'm starting to think I don't have a choice. One more thing to try. It's not working. Hello? 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 Please. 
Please open the door. I need help. What do you want? I need your help. Please open the door. No. I know you're in there. Uh, yeah, we just spoke. Please leave. I just need to talk to you. I swear I'm not a cop. Please go away or I'm going to call the cops. Pretty lady, come on! Uh, who won that encounter? To this day, I find it really weird that the manager inf inferred, inferred not to get police involved, as it would have affected the motel's reputation and let go of the situation. I believe that the town could have been home to a cult or drug ring, or possibly something even worse. Tommy arrived with the car after what felt like a year. I never went on long road trips again. I would always take airplanes. Ah, oh, that was so, so cool! I love that. I mean, some of the actual, like, gameplay scripting was a little bit awkward, and I really hated how investigating the closet set me back so far. But what I have to remember for future parts is that I shouldn't be doing what I would expect from a video game. I should be doing the logical thing to do. Because remember, these are somewhat realistic stories that are being told, and I have to think of it in that way. I have to do what makes I have to do what I myself would think to do in that situation. And that was telegraphed in the first part, and I should have applied it here. Now I have to say, even though I don't know how well that's going to work in the video, but having to keep quiet in the closet, having to keep quiet myself, was actually so immersive in a way that I didn't even expect, even though I knew about the mechanic well beforehand. It actually really did add an element of tension, just knowing that if I made a sound, he would find me. And something else that I liked, it didn't establish the antagonist at all. It didn't establish who this guy was or what he wanted, and he was all the scarier for it. And that's the thing, is that it's, it's the mystery of the whole thing. It... I mean, I, I spent the whole video talking about this, but I have to mention it again for the summary to come together. It took all these different ideas and anxieties. Anxieties of the paranormal, of cryptids, of stranger danger. And it put it in all these different settings. Driving home alone at night. Having friends that you don't know if you can or can't trust. The anxiety of having pets or family who don't know where you are and won't know what happened to you and having to sleep in an unfamiliar, seedy location. This part had it all, and I really feel like it took its time, allowed me to kind of engage with the characters, so I really feel like they're in their situation by having to accomplish all the same objectives that they would have to, in a way that's not just objectives meant to move the story along, but also meant to make me 
feel like the character so that even though there's all this creepy stuff going on, I had to push it to the back of my mind so that it's there. It's this creeping anxiety that is allowed to grow naturally throughout the events of the game. But I always had something else I was focused on primarily, like putting my gear in the back of the truck or moving it all into the motel room. Ah, oh, so good. So good, and a huge improvement over the first part that I already really liked, and I can't wait to see where they go with the next one. If I were to have any criticisms, it's due to the, like, you know, the animations and gameplay scripting are a little bit awkward at times. And I, I don't know if these games are translated or if the writing is just a little bit rough, uh, but sometimes, yeah, sometimes the writing is just a little bit awkward. But that's a small complaint. I always... The important thing is that it always made me feel what it wanted me to feel. And what's really impressive about it is that those are feelings that are very subtle and very relatable and things that are very difficult to put across in a game. And I think it did it very successfully. So all in all, I love that. I'm excited for the next part. And if you want to try it out on Steam, the first part is free and this part is only $3. So I highly recommend it. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other games you'd like me to play, or other creepy videos you'd like me to make, the best place to do that is at the Discord, which I will link in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one. For the same reason I love real folklore. It's something to... It's just an idea to put in the back of your head as you're going about your business. Now, even if nothing happens, I'll be jumping at every honking horn.